So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to make documents accessible so that we can use them within Kurzweil, JAWS, and any other text-to-speech program that a student might use. Now, you are most likely going to be applying this knowledge to making just general documents accessible as well, and not just textbooks for students. Sometimes we will have people reach out to the office, a professor or a professional in a different office, and they will have a test or some sort of advertising material or informational resource that's in a digital format that they want to make sure is accessible to students who use programs like this. And so someone might ask you to look through the document and make sure that it's accessible. So I'm going to go through how to do that. Now what we want to do to make sure that a document is accessible is we need to make sure that the document can actually be read by some sort of screen reader program. And but to do that we have to run something that's called an OCR scan. Now, OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. And basically what it does is, for PDF documents and other image documents, these documents are not text searchable. So when we are looking at a PDF, I'm sure you've tried to do this before, if you try to hit Control F and try to find a word in a PDF, you're not able to, because you're not actually looking through a text searchable document, like a Word document, it's just an image of a page. But it, the PDFs have the capability of becoming text searchable if you run an OCR scan on them. And we can actually do that through Adobe Acrobat, which I'm in right now. So in order to do that, there's a couple of steps. Um, I'm just going to open up the page thumbnails really quick just so I can see how many pages I have. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to tell the program what language it's going to be looking for words in. So to do that, I want to go up to File, and then click on Properties. Now there's just only one property I want to change on the page, and it's this Language property down at the bottom. And I want to change that to English. Once it's done English, I can just click OK. That's the only property that I'm changing. Once that's set, the next thing is to actually run the OCR scan on the program, or on the document. So we're going to click on Tools, and go to Recognize Text right here. Now, we're going to recognize text just in this file. You could certainly run it on multiple files at a time, but the bigger the document, the more time it's going to take to run an OCR scan, so it's usually easier to run it on smaller documents individually. So I'm going to click on In This File. By default, it's going to have all pages selected, so it's going to run this scan on every page that I have in this document. And then down in the settings, this is where we choose that language that we just set. So where it says primary OCR language English, I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to click OK. Once I click OK, the scan starts, and you can see that in this bottom right here. And it's going to flip through the pages as it goes. So when this is running, you just want to leave it running until it's done. Once it's done, it will bring you back to the first page as it just did. So now that it's back, back at the first page, the OCR scan has been completed. Now all the words that are on the page now should be text searchable. So, that, so there now should be the availability of being able to search for words and also have programs like a screen reader program or Kurzweil or JAWS have it actually read the words that are in this document. Now we want to go one step further and it's not just good enough to have the words be available we actually need to make sure that those words are going to be read in a, a, a decent order, a logical order. For example, when you're reading through a document, you have been doing it so naturally that you, you should know that there's a certain way that you would read this page. So for example, if I were to read this page, I would read first this title, Planning Maps. I would read this column first. So I'd read through these two paragraphs, and then I would move over to the right, and I would read these two paragraphs. So for us, we know that logically, but we will have to make sure the computer knows that, so that's going to read it in the right order. To do that, we go down to Accessibility, and then under Accessibility, we have this option called Add Tags to Document. So I'm going to click on that, and you saw there was just a flash of a progress bar, because it's a small document and it happened very quickly. Now, what that did is, it added tags to the document, meaning that it added, it put boxes around the text so that it knows, okay, these are the chunks of text that I actually have to read. 
it added form to the words that we had rather than just having text searchable words on the document. It should now have them in confined spaces. But you can see there's nothing that we can actually see on the page. To actually see those tags that just got added, we want to click right here, touch up reading order at the bottom. So we click on that, this touch up reading order op or menu is going to show up. I'm just going to move it to the side for now. And then you can see that there are now these gray boxes that are all around the text. And each box has a number on it. So you can see this is number one, number two, number three, and number four. Those numbers are the reading order. So that means it's going to read whatever is in these boxes in that order. So it's going to read number one first and then number two and so on. So you can see this is actually, it's set up so that when these tags get added, for the most part, uh, it's actually pretty logical. And these, these boxes usually get put in the right order just automatically. So you generally don't have to make sure these are fine. Um, especially for if you are doing this for a Kurzweil textbook, you don't very often have to go through and set the reading order in here yourself because you can also do a very similar process in Kurzweil, which I will cover in a different video. Um, but this is incredibly important if you are looking through an exam or some other sort of digital information, um, like an ad or some sort of resource that's on the Binghamton website and you're trying to make sure that it's accessible to people. You want to make sure that the reading order is correct so that it will actually read in the correct order. For example, you wouldn't want it reading this very last paragraph first, then jumping to this main paragraph second, and so on. You want to make sure that it's correct. Now, the nice thing about this is, while it also, it generally will put these boxes in a logical order, it also will assign um, it will assign boxes the correct uh, category. So you can see over in this touch up reading order menu, they're grayed out right now. But you can see there's text, there's form fields, there's figures, tables, and cells. So there are many different options you can add onto a page. And you want to make sure that the, uh, the category that you assign to something is so that actually matches up. So all of these paragraphs, all these tags that we have right here, this is just plain text. So for all of these, if we click on the number of their box, and we can just, they already should be text, but say they were not and I wanted to make them text, I just click text, and now it's a text tag. If I wanna make a different tag though, I certainly can. So for example, down here, we can see on this page there are figures. So for these ones, instead of text, it automatically filled it in as a figure. And I didn't do that, the program did it itself when I added tags. So you can see it's pretty intuitive. It, it pretty much knows what's on the page. So you don't have to worry about adding categories to these tags manually. But what's particularly important for these images is you can see where it says figure and it says no alternate text exists. That's not good for us because anyone who uses a screen reader program like JAWS, um, or like Kurzweil, if, it, if the image has no alternate text, it won't be able to read that. So particularly in the, the case of JAWS, JAWS is a program that uh, people who are visually impaired or blind can use, and it will read uh, what is on the computer screen. The thing is, if someone's visually impaired, they won't actually be able to see this image themselves. So the purpose of the alternate text for that image is to describe what that image is showing so that they can also learn from that image. So it's very important that because there's no alternate text right now, it's important for us to add some alternate text. Uh, in order to do that, I can just, I can click on this box and then I can right click it and you can see edit alternate text. So then in this box, I can just type a description of the picture. So this picture, you can see it actually has a description below it. It says two maps of city water mains. You could very easily just type in that description. Obviously you wanna just make it as simple as possible and as descriptive as possible so that the person, if the, the person who is listening to this and who cannot actually see the image is able to, um, able to understand what the image is getting across and what the importance of it is. Now, these are the biggest things that you wanna make sure to make, make a document actually accessible. We wanna make sure the reading order is correct and we want to make sure that any images or figures or anything all have accessible text. 
or alternate text, excuse me. Obviously, you can, I, as I showed you earlier, in this reading order menu, there are other options. So there's different headings, there's tables, there's figures. So if you do have a table, you know, with columns and rows, you can make that make that one a table instead. You can also, if you weren't satisfied with this, if or if you needed to change up the page and what uh, tags are actually available, you certainly can delete them. I can just right click on them and delete the selected item structure. I then can just click any blank space on a page that doesn't already have a tag, and I can just click and drag a box over that text. And you can see it has now highlighted all these words. So now I can choose what I want this to be. So I could choose it to be text, I could choose it to be a table, whatever it is. So for this purpose, this is text. So I'm just going to choose text, and you can see there's now a new tag there. I might have to then check to see if the reading order for that is correct. Uh, because it might fill in a different reading order because I just added a new one. But these are kind of the basics of what you want to go over to make sure that a document is actually accessible. So just make sure that it's reading in a logical order. Make sure any images, any tables all have the sort of alternate text that they would need to make sure that the, the student reading it can make sense of it. So the last thing I'm going to show you is now that you have this knowledge about creating accessible documents is we need to do this for Kurzweil documents as well. So for Kurzweil, Kurzweil is a great program, but for whatever reason, the larger the document you try to load into it, the harder time it has. If you try to load a document that's any larger than 50 pages or so, sometimes it will not load those pages or, at all, or the program will crash. Um, so for us, it's important to make sure that the pages are or that the text is split up into different sections of pages, usually you can just go by the chapters of the book because usually, unless it's a longer book, those chapters will not be longer than 50 pages and that's perfectly acceptable. So if I go to just this main, this is, this is uh, the entire book where before I was just looking at a section of the book. So this is an enti the entirety of a book called Design Better Maps. And say I want to extract just chapter one, and I want to make sure that chapter one is then accessible. So what you can do is you can first click on a page and highlight it, so that's blue. I'm then going to scroll down all the way until I see chapter two start. So you can see chapter two starts right here. So what I can do is I can hold down shift on my keyboard and then click. And now that has selected all of the pages in between the two pages I clicked. Once I have all these pages selected, I can right click on them and extract the pages. This will pull them out of this document and put them into their own document. So I have a document with just chapter one inside of it. These are the pages that I want and I'm just gonna click OK. So now you can see there is no beginning of chapter two down here, I just have chapter one. Now this is really the only main difference between the Kurzweil stuff and what I just showed you about making stuff accessible. So right now I just want to apply everything that I just learned to this Kurzweil document. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my language English. So I'm going to go to File and Properties, change my reading options language to English and click OK. Then in the top right I'm going to go to Tools, I'm going to Recognize Text, and then I'm going to hit in this file, choose my language, and click OK. Once this scan is done, the last thing I'm going to do is add tags. Now sometimes you might see that a document does not have any tags available to add, so that option might be grayed out. If that is the case, that means that the document that you uploaded is actually already a text searchable document. So that means that you can't add tags because it's already naturally a text searchable document and it's already going to read it logically on its own. So if you can't add tags, don't worry about it. You should be perfectly okay to just leave it. So I'm just going to wait a moment and allow this scan to finish.
and generally this process does not take so long, but the more information that is available on the pages, particularly the more images that there are, the longer it will take to run an OCR scan on the page. So now we can see it popped back to the first page, so that means I'm good to go. I'm going to click on Accessibility, and then I'm going to add my tags. And that's it. Now I'm done. Now as I showed you earlier, you can touch up the reading order, but you really shouldn't have to do that because Kurzweil is actually going to run its own OCR scan on the document again after you upload it into Kurzweil. So it's important for us to do this ahead of time, but you don't necessarily need to worry about setting up the reading order very specifically within Adobe because Kurzweil will put its own reading order on the document in most cases. And usually it's, it's almost always logical. If it is not logical, students can very easily just click and play where they need to so they can kind of navigate the page on their own, which is more than, more than acceptable. So that's really it for this video. I hope you learned something. We're just, again, what we learned is just how to make documents accessible and then how to apply that to setting up Kurzweil documents. Um, in my previous video regarding um, finding alternate format textbooks, I went, up, I went over how to actually upload those books into our Kurzweil library. So I hope that was helpful. Um, and please check out my other videos. Hopefully they're helpful.